Hello everyone, welcome back. Before today's lecture, just uh, one announcement about the last homework 5 already posted and uh, it's still November 20th, Friday, midnight. And after today's lecture, you can finish almost uh, all the questions except the flash memory. We are going to discuss that on Thursday. And today we are going to continue our discussion on the lecture 18. And uh, this is about the dynamic random access memory, DRAM. And uh, we talked about the SRAM in the previous lecture 17, which is used for the cache memory in the memory hierarchy. And the DRAM, if you recall, in the memory hierarchy, is used for the main memory. And it's uh, off chip. It's typically off the processor's chip. So this is a separate chip. And this is the reading material from the reference book and the recorded lectures from the last spring and the Professor Asif Khan. All right, dynamic random access memory, DRAM. And if you have ever opened the desktop system, you may have seen this kind of circuit board. Uh, this is so-called the DIMM, DIM module. This is a dual inline memory module. And uh, uh, you have so many pins here. And those pins uh, are for the data bus interface. And uh, actually, you are going to insert this circuit board to the motherboard of the system. And on the circuit board, we have the packages, the chips. So here you see those. Those are the DRAM chips. So this is a DRAM chip. And if you look at the system's spec, you may find the DRAM's information. For example, in those MacBook. Uh, specs you see here 8 gigabytes memory or 16 gigabyte memory so this is the DRAM and DRAM as I said earlier is typically a separate chip than the processor the DRAM may be packaged onto this circuit board and uh, uh, also we may have those uh, SSD, which is made of the flash memory. We're going to discuss that later on Thursday. Now for the DRAM here, this 8 gigabyte or 16 gigabyte memory is used for the working memory for the whole system. Because most of the frequent data your program is going to use will be stored in the DRAM. So those are the data that you are going to frequently fetch and then you are going to load in that into the cache and then do the processing. And if you aim for the long-term uh, storage, then you have to save the data into the SSD uh, for the long-term storage after the chip is uh, powered off. But as long as the chip is uh, powered on, the frequent data, most of them should be in the DRAM. And then a few key features for the DRAM. From the name here, dynamic means the DRAM will do this periodic refresh. And we're going to discuss this in more details later today. This is respected to the static in the SRAM. And static, you don't need the periodic refresh. But here in the DRAM, we need to dynamically refresh the data before the data is gone. And we are going to discuss about this later. Again, this is a random access memory. That means each bit in the memory array can be accessed. That means read or write independently. Again, DRAM is a volatile memory. That means if the power supply is removed, you will lose the memory states. The data will be gone. So let's look at the DRAM's uh, implementation into the circuits. And uh, this is the one transistor, one capacitor, one T1C cell. 
for the DRAM. So here what we draw is just one cell of the DRAM memory array. And DRAM is a binary memory. That means one cell like this is going to store one bit information, like either zero or one. So here we show the word line, like the horizontal row, and then the bit line, like the vertical column. So this is like one intersection of the word line and bit line. So here we have one memory cell. And you can imagine we need to duplicate the cells horizontally and vertically to build this two-dimensional array, as we discussed earlier. So today we are going to only focus on this memory cell and uh, this is in this uh, box so it's one transistor one capacitor so this transistor typically is a MOS transistor and uh, we call it access transistor and then the data is going to be stored as a charge in this storage node that means electrons uh, are stored in this storage node so here is the location where the information is stored. So if the storage node stores digital 1, we are going to uh, store the charge on this capacitor. So you will have charge. And then this voltage will be the VDD. If you store 0, then there's no charge and this voltage will be ground so the information is stored in this storage node it's on the one plate of this capacitor the other plate is typically grounded or attached to a constant bias but this storage node voltage will vary depending on the data you store. And then let's talk about the write operation. If you want to write the data into this storage node, what you need to do is to prepare the data from the bit line. For example, if you want to write the data 1 into the storage node, you need to first uh, bias your bit line to be VDD to prepare this one. And then this access transistor basically is a bridge between the storage node and the external connection to the outside of the array. So you have to turn on this word line if you want to write. So you have to turn on this word line. And then if you store zero initially, And now you want to write with one. So the voltage here you say this will be VDD. And then the other side is zero. And this transistor's gate is turned on to be VDD. So this transistor is basically on, and then you will have current flow this way. So this is going to charge up this tester. So eventually the storage node voltage will be the same as the VDD when the charge uh, when the charging process is complete that means the data you store here is flipped from 0 to 1 so this is how you write 1 and if you want to write 0 let's say now you have 1 already if you want to write 0 then what you need to do is again prepare the 0 here like a ground to the bit line, that means you are going to write zero. Then again, we need to turn on the WL to turn on this bridge. Now the current flow will reverse because now this side will be VDD, the other side here. So here, then the current flow will re reverse the direction. Now flow to the right. So then this VDD will be discharged. That means charge is going to move or uh, extract from this capacitor plate. And then eventually this will go to ground. Then 
the data will be written to zero. So this is how you uh, write the data into the DRAM cell. Any questions so far? Is there a typo in the slide? Right zero says BL VVDD. Oh yes. Thank you for catching that. This is a typo. Okay, so this is a write operation. Then let's talk about the read. So let's uh, draw this. So if you want to read out the data, let's assume the data you store is uh, 1. So that means this is, will be VDD. Now the difference is that the bit line needs to be pre-charged to be half VDD. This is pre-charge. Pre-charge means you are going to bias the bit line to be half VDD, and after that you make it floating. So the bit line actually is associated with some presetic capacitance CB. Because as we discussed also in the s runs case, uh, the long wires like those bit line or wire line, because between wires you have the isolation layer. So between two wires, it's like two plates with some isolation. So you have the capacitance associated with the wires. So the wire can be categorized as some parasitic capacitance. So basically, we are going to precharge this bit line parasitic capacitance to be half VDD. And then we turn on the wire line. So now you see here, this is half VDD. And uh, you store VDD to the storage node. So the current will flow this way. So this current is going to transfer some charge from the storage node to the bit line. And uh, this current is going to charge up the bit line a little bit. So the bit line voltage will increase because of this current inject to the bit line. So this voltage will increase by some amount, and we call this delta V. This is the sense margin. So the bit line voltage will change from half VDD plus delta V. So this is when you read the one. And also we can look at what will happen if you read zero. You store zero here, so this is zero. Again, you need to precharge to be half VDD because you don't know what's the data inside. So you assume it's half VDD to start with. And again, we need to turn on the word line. So the current flow direction will reverse, right? And then this current is going to remove some charge from the bit line capacitance. That means you are going to discharge the bit line capacitance and then move the charge to the storage node. Effectively, this voltage on the bit line will decrease by delta V because the current flow direction now is from the bit line to the storage node. So there you see the difference here. When you read one, the bit line will increase by delta V. When you read zero, the bit line will decrease by delta V. So you create a voltage difference between those two cases. And then we need to rely on the peripheral circuits, in particular, the sense amplifier to sense the small voltage difference and then amplify that. This will be eventually amplified to be digital one, and this will be eventually amplified to the digital zero. So this is how you read out the data. Any questions? All right, so then let's look at this uh, 
readout process in more details. And essentially, this is a charge sharing process. And we care about the sense margin delta v, and we want to calculate what is the delta v. So let's look at this uh, delta v derivation in the following analysis. So here, let's assume we have those two capacitance, the storage node as the CS capacitance, and the bit line, as we discussed earlier, will have the presetic capacitance, CB. And the transistor is like the switch. We turn on the WL, we are going to turn on the transistor and let the current flow. And before we turn on the transistor, then this is like an open circuit to the first order. So we are going to consider the charge transfer process here. But before we turn on the transistor, let's look at how much charge this circuit has in total. So before we turn on the transistor, we call it initial stage. So initially, here on the right hand side of this equation, we see the charge on the capacitor is the CS times the VS. And here we assume it stores one. So the VS is the VDB. So you have this uh, CS times VDE, that is the charge on the storage capacitor. And on the right hand side, you have the bit line, and bit line is pre-charged to be half VDD. This is the initial. And then this half VDD multiplied by the capacitance CB, that is a charge on this bit line capacitance. So you have this. So in total, you have those amount of charge in this circuit. And then now you turn on the transistor to make the current flow. That means we are going to transfer the charge. So in this case, because you store one here, then VDD, and then this is higher potential, so current flow to the right. That means we are going to move some charge from the storage node to the uh, bitman. And, and voltage node. And, but the charge is conservative in this process. So the total amount of charge will be the same, no matter how you move them around. And eventually, the charging process will be complete when the bit and voltage increase. And of course, as at the same time, this storage node voltage will decrease. But eventually, when those two voltage uh, reach the same level, that's equal potential, then the current flow will stop. That means we finish the transfer process. So we, have, we care about what is the final equilibrium voltage, and that is uh, increased from the initial voltage by this delta V. So this will be the final voltage on the bit line. And then this final voltage will be the same as this the other side. Right? The other side initially is VDD, and finally it will be the same as this one. Because finally, this two voltage must be the same in order for the current to stop flowing. So that is the final voltage we care about here. So this final voltage is the same on those two nodes. That means the total charge will be this final voltage multiplied by this capacitance plus this final voltage multiplied by this capacitance. That's why we have CS plus CB times this VBL final. So we can solve for this VBL final, right? So this VBL final will be CS plus CB, CS VDD plus CB over CS plus CB, and then here half VDD. So this is the final voltage. And compared to the initial voltage, half VDD, so we use this half VDD as a reference. So that is the initial voltage. So this VBL final minus the initial 
that is half VDD. Then we get the difference, that is this delta V, because initially is half VDD, finally is half VDD plus delta V. So here we're going to take the difference between final and initial to get this delta V. So if you do that, you use this equation, minus half VDD, and you can move the terms around. And eventually, you will get this formula here. That is the delta V. And you can say it's a factor of this half VDD. And this factor is 1 over 1 plus CB over CS. So here you see this ratio is important. Ideally, we need delta VBL large. Because this is a sense margin. We want to detect this difference. So we want this margin to be large. So we want this delta VBL large. If you want this to be large, you see here the ratio CB over CS needs to be small because it's in the denominator. This one needs to be small. Or in other words, you want CB to be smaller than CS. You want to have large storage load capacitance, small parasitic bitland capacitance in order to get a large voltage margin to sense. So this is how we reach this equation. Any questions? So this is when we assume this storage node stores 1 and we derive the delta V increase. And similarly, you can assume this storage node stores 0. You will reach the same conclusion for the delta V. The only difference is that now the bitnet will be half VDD minus delta V. But the delta V is, is the same as this equation. Let's look at the waveform of this process. So as we discussed earlier, in this example, we assume the storage node stores 1. And this orange line is the storage node waveform. And it starts with VDD because it stores 1. And then the bit line voltage, in this case, recharged to be half VDD. So we start from here. And now at this moment, we turn on the WL to make this transistor turn on. And then, as we discussed, we have this charge sharing process. So charge will move from the storage node to the bitman. So the storage node voltage will decay, and then bitman voltage will increase. But eventually, they will reach the same potential. And then the bitman voltage increase here, this one, is the, the delta VBL we calculated. Delta V. This delta V is given by this equation. And then at this moment, we need to turn on the sense amplifier enable signal. This sense amplifier is in the peripheral circuit. The job is to amplify the small signal difference here. So here we have a, a delta V. And then once you turn on the sense amplifier, we are going to discuss that in the next slide. Then this uh, bitline voltage will be amplified to be 1. So eventually this will go to VDD. And the amplifier is typically like a differential amplifier. It's like your op amp with two inputs. So if one input goes to VDD, the other input typically is attached to the reference, will go down to zero. So this is a V reference. The other black curve here shows a V reference. So this V reference will go to zero. And then at the same time, we have this important right back process going on. So here you see that during the charge pro uh, sharing process, actually the storage node voltage, the orange line, decays to this level. This is not what you want because the read process should not change the data. So after read, if you store one, then you still want it to be one. So here, at this moment, once we turn on the sense amp, 
then the storage node will go through this write back process. And uh, this is done by the BL voltage charge back to the storage node voltage. And we'll discuss that in the next slide. Uh, at the end of the process, the storage node voltage should go back or recover to the VDD because it stores one. And after that, then the read process is complete. So this read back is important to prevent the disturb to the data. And we're going to discuss this in more details from, I mean, in the next slide. Any questions on this waveform? Okay, then let's talk about the write back process in more details together with the sense amplifier from the peripheral circuit. So here we show the whole uh, array with the peripheral circuits. And here this is a cell, and we have this capacitor here. So we have this 1T1C, 1T1C. And this is the cell we are going to read out. But actually, we need so many transistors at the edge of the array. That means end of the column. So you have many rows, and this is the like end of the bit line. At the end of the bit line, then you have those peripheral circuits. And here we have this uh, blue box here. This is the sense amplifier. And then we have another gray box. This is the equalizer circuit. So let's talk about the equalizer first. And here we have the BL. This is your real data line. And then we typically will have a reference line. So here is a reference line. Because the sense amplifier is a differential amplifier. So we need two inputs. One is the real data column. The other side is the reference column. So we need to pre-charge the bit line to be half VDD. As we discussed here, we need to pre-charge that before you turn on the over line. So the pre-charge is done by this equalizer circuit. So here you have three MOS transistor. They are controlled by this uh, signal. And then they are attached to a bias half VDD here. So basically, if you turn on the enable signal for this equalizer, this is the enable signal. If you turn on this, so basically those three transistors will be turned on simultaneously. And then eventually those two, the bit line and bit line bar will be precharged to be the same half VDD. Because the Q7 is a cross between the reference line and the bit, bit line. So only when those two sides have the same potential, that is the same as this half VDD, then the current flow will stop in the Q7. That means it reaches the uh, e equilibrium state. So this equalizer is to make the BL and the, the reference none to be half VDD to start with here at this moment. So this is the uh, uh, equalizer. And then that means here for the sense amplifier, this part, this node is also half VDD. And this is also half VDD. And let's look at this sense amplifier circuit. Actually, you are familiar with this. Because in the middle here, this Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 are two coupled, cross-coupled inverter. It's like the latch, or similar as the SRAM, the middle part. So you have this cross-coupled latch, but the cross-coupled latch is controlled by Q5 and Q6. This is the, the sense amp enable signal. Sense amp enable. It's 5S. 
and this complementary fast bar. So the sensor may enable to be off uh, normally. So that means Q5 and Q6 are open circuits. So if the cross-coupled inverter in the middle does not uh, attach to the VDD and ground, so basically it's floating in the middle. So this is floating. That's why those two node voltage can be enforced to be half VDD. This is cross-coupled inverter. You can see this inverter, two inverter. And it's like those two voltage here is half VDD. This is possible if this inverter is not attached to the uh, VDD at the ground, if this is uh, not connected to the VDD at the ground. This is like the, if you think about the VTC, the voltage transfer curve for the inverter. We are talking about the VM points, basically. You are biasing this to the VM points. And then if you think about the cross coupling inverter, if you draw the VTC of those two inverters in the same plot, you will have this butterfly curve with this middle point. It's like the VM. So this is like a stable point of this circuit. But this is not really stable. We will discuss why is that later. But before you turn on the sensor main label, this is kind of stable in the middle because you enforce those two voltage by the equalizer to be half VDD. And now you turn on the WL, so you read out the current from this uh, 1T1C D1 cell. So if it stores one, as we discussed, the bit line will have delta V increase of the voltage. And the bit line the other side is a reference line, so this will not change. So that's why here in the reference line they will change, and the bit line here you see increase by this delta V. And then at this moment, we need to turn on the sense amp enable. So if we turn on the sense amp enable, then this latch in the middle will flip. Now this is turned on. Then you know, for this inverter, you cannot maintain this kind of state. It must switch to the stable state. That is. So here on this side, you have this half VDD plus delta V. The other side is half VDD. So this side will be flipped to VDD, and the other side will be forced to ground, because you only have this stable circuit like this. So this will be enforced to be 1 on the BL and 0 on the reference line. So that's why this BL is uh, rising up to 1 VDD. And the reference is going to zero. This is because this inverter, cross coupled inverter, forced the voltage to have this kind of flipping. So at the same time, if this BL voltage increased to VDD, because this WL is turned on, so this BL voltage will charge this back, charge this node back to be VDD. So that means as you increase the BL voltage, that means here this side, the voltage is ramping up. Because this transistor is on, so the storage node voltage will also follow. That's why you have BL increase first, and then storage node voltage will follow. And then this is a right back process. And eventually, then you will have BL reach VDD as storage node voltage reach VDD and then you can finish the read operation. So this is how the read process uh, work uh, from 
uh, complete uh, picture. So, any questions? I know this is a little bit complicated, although the circuit seems easy for DRAM, one transistor, one capacitor. So let's uh, emphasize a few key points. What you need to understand is the BL will change. Uh, first of all, BL should be pre-charged to be half ADD. And then depending on the data you store, the half ADD will increase or decrease by delta V. And then you should be able to calculate what is this delta V according to this equation. And then understand there is a write back process. So if you want to read out one, after the read, then the data should be one again. So this should be recovered to be one. If it's a zero, then it should be recovered to zero. So I think those are the key points in the DRAM read operation. Let me stop here.